Anti-Corruption Day, which is celebrated by the UN on the 9th of December every year, is designated as one that everybody is going to be fighting corruption. So that's why it's, uh, it's uh, called International um, uh, Anti-Corruption Day. And uh, all the anti-corruption agencies, organizations, and including the MDBs, we use that day to talk about how corruption hurts development, and we talk about it in order to also raise awareness about the scourge of corruption. So uh, the bank, what we are doing uh, during this important event is we are going to be raising people's awareness. Uh, what we're going to do especially uh, for, specifically, sorry, for this, uh, for this time is that we're going to be asking the bank's staff, inviting them to come to uh, our uh, department here, and then we're going to talk to them about corruption. They can ask their questions about what it is that we do, what it is that the bank does, and what it is that hurts uh, development in general in Africa and the world as a whole. People should be concerned about fighting corruption because it is not okay not to fight corruption. It is not okay at all, you know. Uh, you know, uh, Africa's main challenge is how to minimize uh, the scourge, the scourge. And therefore, because this scourge, you know, destroys the opportunities that we have. Not only does it destroy the opportunities that, it ha that we have, it also uh, diverts the needed resources for the development of, uh, of Africa. It creates inequalities uh, and it also erodes equity and fairness. And when people believe that they are not being fairly treated, what happens? Instability. Instability, wars, conflicts. And all that can be attributed uh, in the main part to corruption. So good governance, if you don't have good governance, then you undermine human rights. And as I say, it leads to conflicts. So it is not okay for anybody to sit by unconcerned while there's this scourge which is not helping Africa. 2015, we are going to launch even more this fight against corruption by raising the awareness, not only of the bank staff, but also our partners in the RMCs. Uh, we, that's what we're going to do. Uh, you know, the, when we talk about uh, statistics, statistics, statistics about corruption and whatnot, people just look at the figures, but they forget to look at stark realities behind the statistics. We are talking about people. We are talking about development. We are talking about um, how it is that the infrastructure in Africa is not as it should be. So one of the things, the main things that we're doing in our preventive division, you know we have two divisions, prevention and then we also have investigation. The prevention division is really, really geared up for raising awareness, for going out into our RMCs, for us to do some training of the bank staff and the RMCs. We are going aggressively after companies and entities that have found to have engaged in sanctionable practices in our bank-funded projects. We are really going after them, not only because uh, uh, they, are, they, 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 they are not helping, you know, to bring uh, infrastructure, the infrastructure that we need uh, to, 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 to Africa, but also we want to send a very strong message that it's not okay to indulge in sanctionable practices. So what do we do about that? We uh, the new sanctions regime of the bank has really helped us as, uh, as well. Because not only do we debar such companies and entities, but we also make sure that we impose fines upon them. And uh, uh, you may also know that this year alone, through our new sanctions process, we have been able, through negotiated resolutions, to have the bank impose a total amount of 42 million, almost 42 million on post, uh, on in uh, fines and penalties. So I think that what we're saying out there is that it's not okay for you to come and indulge in sanctional practices in the bank funded project, projects. And the money we are hoping uh, to, to get, the money that we are getting, we are hoping to put it back into the RMCs. Uh, to strengthen their own anti-corruption agencies and law enforcement uh, uh, institutions and so that they also can have the capacity 
to fight corruption from their, from their perspectives. When we fight corruption, corruption fights back. That's number one. You cannot expect to fight corruption and then everything, and this is the reason why it just perpetuates, you know. It fights back and it takes many, many forms. So, so depending even on the level of corruption, corruption has got many friends in high places and powerful places, and therefore it has allies. So most of us, most of us give up. We give up and we say just, it is just too hard to fight this thing. It's going to be with us forever. Why are we fighting it? Um, and yes, it is true that you cannot fight it by yourselves or alone. Uh, but if we do it together, uh, if we are partners in this fight, if we have unity of purpose, uh, if we understand that beyond the rhetoric, uh, the statistics, the jargon, the buzzwords we, uh, or that we often use, if we recognize that the stark truth um, uh, is that it affects our people, it affects our continent, uh, and we ourselves are also hurt uh, by being indifferent. If we take the fight very seriously and collectively, we can make a difference. That is the message that the anti-corruption department wants to give to everybody. And on the occasion of uh, International Anti-Corruption Day, our clarion call to everybody is that let us be partners in fighting corruption. Uh, our aim should be zero corruption, 100% development. Thank you.